Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Hump Day, y'all. It is Wednesday, and welcome to all of our friends and family and guests to Couch Chronicles. And we're coming to you live in the studio today at Love Radio Network. I am your worldwide radio host personality, Miss Simone, and I'm thanking you for tuning in to share your time with me tonight. It is a great day to be empowered and to enjoy your journey right from your very own homes and especially from your very own couch. So go ahead and get a glass of whatever you like. Sit yourself down. Enjoy the nuances of a woman and man's perspective on life, love, friends, liberty, dating, generational issues, and curses, plus every topic in between. Now, if you're new to Couch Chronicles, we all say welcome, welcome. Come on in and enjoy the show. And if you're a reoccurring or dedicated Couch Chronicle fan, thank you, thank you for your dedication, all of your time, and for being a ride-or-die Couch Chronicle baby. So go ahead, call or text your friends and family to come on in and join us. If you're a member, you can log on to LUVRadioNetwork.com. Go ahead, sign on up, press the live button, or you can call into the show at 1-563-999-3519. That number again is 1-563-999-3519. Three five one nine. If you have a question or have a comment on what's being said today, please don't be afraid to press the one button. We're having a very interesting topic tonight. Come on in. It's so easy to sit on the couch, sit back for a wonderful and sometimes very grown show is what we're going to have today. So remember, you can connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Simone, S-Y-M-O-N-E, last name Hurt, H-U-R-T. Go ahead, send me that friend request, and I'll be more than happy to befriend you back so you can be part of the Couch Chronicle Party. So take your time out to check me out, especially on the website. Oh, my goodness. I'd love for you to go do that because once you become a member and then you look through the website, you just go ahead and tap two times on my face, the only time I'm going to allow you to do that, and check out your girl. We got at least three or four of uh, past shows that are up there. And if you miss Legacy, you definitely miss one hot show. So I'm just going to tell you, go ahead and do that. Come on in. Be part of the Love Radio Network party and family, y'all, because we love to have you. We have great shows. We've got great music. And we got fantastic movies that are on the Internet. So we thank you again for showing up praying everyone is well today and please make sure that you're staying safe our topic today is how high or low is your sexual libido tonight's show is very very grown so my disclaimer is go ahead and put them kiddos to bed or in another room because this show just isn't for them tonight this is for my grown you know my grown groans and my sexy sexies out there that may or may not be having troubles changes or mutual issues with keeping up with the sexual desires like we used to. Um, I'm not all of us are 20. Not all of us are 30. Some of us are 40, 50, 60s and up. And we've been going through some things. And, we, and it's been an uphill battle and a downhill slide sometimes. So just hang on in there. If you don't even have any problems whatsoever in that arena, that's okay. The show is still for you. Because no matter what age you are, you are going to happen to go through something that we're going to talk about tonight here on the show live. So, A. Hey, this topic is very grown. Please make sure, that's a disclaimer, to make sure that the kiddos are not listening. So now that I have a few of y'all uh, relating to this situation or issue or topic, um, there are some that will relate and some that will not. But just it's a good listening opportunity for you to just educate yourself on some things that people are going through out there. So if it happens to hit you at any point in time in your life, you can deal with it yourself. And you can say, I learned about that on Couch Chronicles with Ms. Simone. So this education does come highly recommended. I am not a physician. I am not a therapist. I am not all any of those things. I am just a student of life, and I've done a lot of homework <laughs> and a lot of um, interning on a lot of things about some of these topics. So I just want to share with you, it's, this topic has been requested of me to do several times. And for those of you who have requested them, here it is. So here we go. So to get the party started, make sure you text all your family tonight. Text them the number or loveradionetwork.com, and that's L-U-V Radio network.com to get in on the action. And some of y'all are part of groups and you know how to get them in on our group chat. So text, invite them to come on in and listen and enjoy the show from their couch. 
because tonight we are all family, and you know what happens when family gets together and have a little fun. So grab your drink, because, whoo, child, I got mine. Nestle on in, but don't pull that blanket up too far, because, matter of fact, it's really hot outside lately, but it's about to get real hot up in here tonight. So just go ahead, lean in, and learn you something new, and enjoy the ride, my love. So how's everyone doing tonight? I hope great. I'm doing just fine. Um, as always, I thank you for all your time and energy to, for listening to the show today. And as my grandma D used to say, sometimes intimacy starts with a good old conversation. So guess what, y'all? We're going to start talking. First and foremost, let's define the word libido so that we can all be on the same page, y'all. Now, I want to thank Merriam-Webster Dictionary slash libido for our definitions tonight. Um, there's two. And then a semi one, <laughs> but uh, one has to do with uh, sexual drive is your sexual libido. It is connected to your personality. It is connected to your lifestyle. Um, a lot of things drive your uh, sexual libido, and we're going to get a little uh, more into all that as we go along. The second one is instinctual psychic energy. That has a psychoanalytic theory, and is derived from a primitive biological urge. Now, as for sexual pleasure or for self-preservation, and that is actually expressed in a conscious activity, which means you know what you do when, okay? We all know what we're doing out here. We all grown, grown. Y'all know that. Now, libido, which means a sex drive or a desire for having sex, um, actually varies dramatically from one person to the next. Everyone is not the same. Everybody's different. Um, what tends to surprise me is people partner up. Uh, and don't have the real good conversations up front uh, about sex and what turns them on, what they like. And people tend to end up um, either being not sexually compatible or they just aren't in the ballpark at all. I mean, you got a high sex drive person that needs it four or five times a week. And you sitting there with a low drive person that, that only wants to give it to you two times if, because, you know, one of them nights that person's going to say they got a headache. So you still only getting it one time. And then you want to know why people out here doing all this cheating. So I'm just saying, it's just my opinion. You do not have to agree or believe in it. I'm just simply amazed at how people do not have these conversations up front uh, to see whether or not they are even actually sexually compatible before they start jumping in the sheets. Just amazes me, but that's, that's what, what happens out here. Um, we'll talk about different things. Uh, unless you're worried about your person's sex drive, um, you do need to either seek professional help or you at least need to have the conversation, y'all. That's all I'm trying to get at. Have the conversation. Find out if that person is as freaky as you are. You got some freaks out here with some um, queens and nuns and a whole bunch of other things that just don't want to really do too much of anything. And don't and don't take that that queen part wrong because some queens are very calm and very low key. Um, and not all queens are highly sexualized or over sexualized. So I'm just saying, you, you know, do your homework, y'all. Make sure that you check that out. Make sure that before you're jumping in, in the sheets with somebody that they got the, they at least got the same rhythm and, 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 you know, passion for what you like. And you, that way y'all can have some real, real fun. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of a dud, uh, being with someone and you, you know, you out here all the way to, to the left. You know, you are. You may not tell nobody you are, but you know doggone well that you are. Miss Simone knows it. Miss Simone sees all the time. Um, but then you got someone all the way halfway to the right, and they're they not really trying to swing left <laughs> with, with your ideas of what you want to do in the bed. So we're going to go through a lot of things that are going to talk about how that sexual libido can be compromised, how it can be enhanced, and uh, how to actually have a better libido. Because who's to say what's normal? I get that question all the time. That's how this whole show started. What's a, a normal libido? Well, I don't know what's a normal libido. I know that you have your libido and I have mine. Um, I wouldn't say someone's not of normal libido because whatever they do for themselves and have made that conscious decision to do, um, that's normal for them. So who's to say what is normal and what is not normal? Um, but what I will say uh, what you're not going to do is come up here and talk about you need sex no seven days a week. Now, come on now. Now, that ain't normal. We ain't doing all that. Because if I got to stay with you for 20 years, you know, doggone well, we're not doing that back and forth like that all day, every day. I'm just trying to say. But we can meet somewhere in the middle. I mean, some of y'all can. Some of us cannot. So pick your person wisely. 
I'm just saying, have those conversations. Make sure you get down to the neck grit. I was like, I don't know why people are so afraid to tell someone what they're really into. I mean, there's freak levels to this, y'all. And y'all know I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. And um, I think you need to gauge people on their freak level, you know, before a lot of stuff go down. Because you, you don't want to be, it'll save you from being disappointed, you know, or, or just saying, uh-uh, I am, that wasn't it. That wasn't all. And, you know, a lot of us will do that. Well, jump in the sheets first and then go, mm, I wasn't all this cracked up to be. Mm. <laughs> Okay, um, but you got to figure that out with a little bit more conversation, you know. So I'm just saying what we got to do about it, y'all. Talk about it. So we're going to cover a few other things now that we've got the definition down, and we're going to see where this leads us. So please make sure that if you have any comments or any questions on this topic, I'll be more than happy to hear them from you. Just go ahead and press that one button. And come on in the green room and talk to your girl. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. But as anything, the show has to go on. So let's talk about, we're going to start from the bottom and make our way up. So we're going to talk about why and what causes a libido to actually be low. Now, there's quite, a, there's a plethora of reasons. But the number one thing that comes to my mind, which always makes me chuckle, um, because when I was married, I will tell you the truth. Let me tell you something. I had headaches, too. <laughs> I was like, just not in the mood. I'm just telling you. But fatigue is probably one of the number one common reasons why your libido is so low. You're just tired. You just because you either work too hard, played too hard, or you did something too hard. Now, what I get from my male friends is they are cracking up right now at this moment. Trust me, I've already tested them on the question, and they're still laughing. Ain't no man too tired, literally, for sex. They will find time. They will figure it out because they either want to just go to sleep, they want to knock themselves out, or they just really want that woo-woo before they go to bed. So I'm just saying. Now, what would also be um, another uh, reason for having a very low libido? Of, of course, performance anxiety. Most people don't really get into that and talk about it um, because I don't know if it's from shame or it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, everybody goes through certain cycles and certain periods of whether they're either, you know, really wanting to have sex or they're just nah, not in the mood. They just don't. Other things are more important. But performance anxiety, in most places that I have read, usually indicate that it's more on the male side. Uh, men, I just want to tell you, though, that some women out here, we do have performance anxiety as well, especially when you know you're getting with um, a certain individual who is a total freak, and you're le you know that your freak level is not that high. So you have quite a bit of anxiety. It may not be about that performance, but that anxiety is a little high because you're going to try to figure out how you're going to match all this energy, you know, wherever you're having this activity at. Um, a lot of times the anxiety for women, performance anxiety, may come from either UTIs, um, issues, you know, with their, their health or because they're having painful sex. Um, that could be some of the reason as to why they're really either trying to avoid the sex altogether or they have too many headaches going on. Talk. You've got to talk, people. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, another reason would actually be um, lack of time and privacy. Imagine that. Okay, some people, like I said, find the time no matter what. They don't care. They don't even make it home into the bed. They're either in the car or they're somewhere else. Um, and then there's some people who just can't do it. They, by the time they got in the house, took the clothes off, they're like, ah, I can't do it today. There's not a whole lot of people I know like that, but I have to say that because there are uh, applies to. Uh, let's also talk about another one, familiarity. Familiarity um, goes to people who either started out really hot and heavy, uh, stay together, and now you're on year 10 to maybe 20, and because you're so familiar and things are so routine, um, you tend, your desire for sex tends to lessen over that time. And it's so important to have very strong, valid conversation as well as um, make sure you're checking in with your partner. Okay, um, grow together, learn together, try something new, different. I mean, if you've just been doing regular sex, then maybe it's time for some tantric sex. Get the book, do it together, learn, learn something new. I'm just saying, tantric sex is all right, y'all. Y'all need to check that out. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, 
you know, after a while, I mean, being with the same person over and over again can cause some problems. Um, another issue that's self-related to that also is the fact that um, many of us, uh, when we're mad, sad, upset, hurting, you know, depressed, uh, having mental fatigue and issues, tend to make the our sex not, you know, ready, not available for that action. We're just either too tired, not in the mood, or our mind is just somewhere else that is not going to allow us to be able to function and focus properly on the act, okay? Um, Another one that we can talk about is um, the difference between sex and intimacy. Um, I've had several conversations with uh, my team as well as other individuals who um, females tend to want more intimacy, especially when you've been with your partner for a long period of time. Um, it's much more comfortable for and to you. Um, and ten, men, most men tend to really want sex. Now, ladies, I'm going to drop this bomb on you. Now, if your man is giving you a whole lot of intimacy, um, you need to check in with your dude because I'm just saying, they like sex. They might have married you, but they still want that sex they was getting from you in that, them first six months when they met you. You know, that freestyle sex, that, uh, that um, you know, spontaneous sex here, there, or that I'm just going to tear it up type sex. Uh, just don't get so wrapped up in the intimacy that you can't allow him to be who he really is and his true manness and get it in, get it in sense, um, because they do like to get it in. And I've even talked to men who, which is really interesting, they, they, they have a problem sometimes when they have a um, sense of, I don't know, putting that woman on a pedestal, I guess you can call it, and they don't want to damage her. They don't want to think of her in that light. Um, honey, all I'm going to say is put on some four-inch pumps, get you a new outfit on, and get to getting. Let him know who the heck he got, what he got, and how can be popping, because you're going to have to remind him every now and again. I'm just going to tell you, ladies, okay? And that goes to the men's, too. Y'all don't be all lazy and just come to the bed the same old way each and every guy dog on time. We get tired of that, too. Shoot, do something exciting. Give me a little dance. You talk about you need a lap dance. I need one, too. Shoot, get the, get the roll in them hips and doing something for me. I'm just trying to say, we're going to keep it all real up in here today. So please, everybody, get to talking. We need to keep talking about this because there's too many people that are getting together, having very bad experiences that you don't need to have if you just had the conversation. Now, um, let's get a little deeper into some things. Um, there's a lot of post or past traumatic experiences people have been through. You've got to be careful um, with individuals, and you need to really get to learn somebody because something that you may like to do might be a trigger for someone, okay? And those individuals um, have had to go through a lot of sexual harassment issues, traumas that have happened in their life, sexual abuse, okay? Um, there are ladies and there have, are men that have been raped. And even though you are able to live your life and leave that in the past, certain things that happen, certain smells, and certain activities tend to push that trigger button. Um, and that it's within itself, can, the thought process, let alone any act, can actually impact sexual desire. So make sure you're talking to people. You're going to, you know, they're going to have the best sex you really want to have. You're going to have to have the best conversation and most transparent conversations that you can possibly have because you don't want someone to do something to you and they didn't even know. They, they have no idea. It's, it's hard to hurt someone and you didn't even know that you were hurting them. That's a terrible, terrible feeling. So, I mean, ladies and gents out there, kings and queens, I'm telling you, just talk. Make sure that you uh, get to the root of things and, and let someone know how far you, you're willing to go and what what, you know, what button pushes your button? People need to know, you know, and don't don't take advantage of it, people, just because they tell you what's pushing the button. There's a reason why they're telling you that, okay? So let's move on to the next one. We're going to talk a little bit about stress. And this is a big one for me because um, certain times of the year are very stressful for me. Um, I, I, where I work, we, we have year end, and year end has been happening <laughs> and is not over until Friday, and it is utterly stressful, um, and 
I, I could tell you I probably have not had one thought about sex in probably the past two weeks because that's how busy I've been, inundated, overwhelmed, overworked. I might have talked about it a couple times with a couple people while I was out and about, but uh, that was for research purposes only. But, but it wasn't for me. It just, you know what I'm saying, y'all. Um, not for me to engage in, not for me to actually um, get really totally stimulated by. Um, so, I mean, st- stress hits different people different ways. There's money stress. There's family stress. There's work stress. Um, there's getting old stress. Now, we're going to put that on the table because I'm definitely one of them people. I'm getting older now. I can't do what I used to do, at least not as well as I used to do it. Let's put it that way, okay? Um, that split, it don't go all the way down no more. I'm just saying. The leg, it don't go flush up against the wall no more. I'm just saying. It ain't like it used to be, okay? So that's a little stressful. <laughs> so either I have to work on it or I'm going to have to modify some things. So just think about that, y'all. Make sure that you... um you know, go ahead and uh, make a little list, have yourself some notes, and think about those things. Write down those things that are actually triggering for you. They either trigger you because um, of some type of trauma or it's actually triggering you because you don't like it. Um, sometimes you've got to get real with yourself. Um, there may be things that your partner likes to do that you might not necessarily like to do. And I'm going to say this. Um, being put in some of those situations, trust is a very big factor in being able to get that person uh, to do what you want to do that you know that they're not comfortable doing. Uh, so based upon the level of trust that is built within the relationship, situationship, or whatever you got going on, um, that will determine whether or not that person is going to be willing to drop those that fence, that guard that they have around them to participate, to just try it, you know, either once or try it again, you know, because it may be the first time it wasn't a good experience. Uh, So make sure that you, like I said, if you talk to people and figure out things, things will come so much clearer to the the full force, like a a big old ray of sunshine can start shining through. Ooh, okay, I can speak clearly now, okay? So look, check this out. Exercise. Physical activity. Now, I'm going to tell you all a little joke, inside joke about me. Um, I, I had a partner that told me that I needed to do, I needed to exercise more. And I said, okay, that's great. Well, let's, let's go have sex. And he was like, no, I mean, like, you know, hit the gym. Hit the, I was like, no, I really want to have some sex. I look, everything I can do in the gym pretty much modified, I can do with you. So let me burn the calories the way I'd like to burn them, okay? And if you want to join me, you sure can. Or I, you know, just be over there by myself doing me. Hey, come join or not. It is what it is. Um, but seriously, y'all, I mean, physical activity, it, sex does burn calories. If you look it up, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but physical activity as an exercise is so much better for you. It opens up your chakras. It allows your blood to flow better. Um, Women are, and men, okay, not just the women, but men too, orgasms are harder, heightened, longer, stronger, all of that. Because you got enough blood flowing to all the parts of your body that happen to uh, allow you to have the best, best sexual experience that you could possibly have. So just think about that, you guys. Talk it over with your friend, your spouse significant other, you know, your ace coon boom, you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of that, you know, going on and all that other stuff. Just talk it over with them and see how that person feels about it. Now, relationship issues. That is definitely, definitely a buzzkill when it comes to uh, the libido, okay? For some people, (laughs) miraculously, it's not. (laughs) They don't care. They're going to get it in whether they mad, happy, sad, or they pissed off. They don't care. They just still want to hit. For some of us, <laughs> like myself, if I'm too mad, that ain't happening. That that's not that's not happening. I, it's like I cannot do it. It's like, why am I rewarding you and I'm still pissed? I can't do this. This ain't gonna work. I need you to understand that tonight ain't happening because I'm mad. And if you would like for this to change tomorrow, then we need to talk about it. Uh, so I'm kind of like that. So I'm not for everybody. Trust and believe me. But I will communicate with you on what's going on, what's happening, what we can do. If you ask me, what do I need to do to rectify the situation? I'm sure enough going to tell you. Okay, I have no problem whatsoever, and vice versa, because it's not just all about me. It's about the other person too. 
So I'm a communicator, so it comes a little easier for me. But can relationships issues affect that a libido? You're darn right. And if you don't learn to have better communication skills to improve the overall quality of your relationship, this is going to continue to happen on a much more regular basis than you think. So try to resolve underlying problems, especially tension. Um, you know, know when to, okay, this isn't a good time to talk. I, I need to de-escalate a few so that I can have a communication. I can actually converse with you instead of yelling and screaming. Um, learn to sit across the table from each other to keep things equal and be able to have a, a safe space to communicate your needs, your wants, and whatever those are. Um, there's a plethora of many different things and ways that you can do this. Um, learn how to increase intimacy, okay? Intimacy, I'm talking about the kind that, that's not sexually penetrating. There needs to be more rubbing. There needs to be more hugging. There needs to be more kissing without the intention of sex sometimes. Intimacy can actually draw your relationship closer, but by bonding just through the physical touch, because some people, that's their love language. Touch is their love language. That's why they're all over you all the day on time, okay, because that, that's how they love. They, they love that, okay. Um, they communicate with that. They, you know exactly what they're thinking by what body part they're trying to touch. It's real cut, dry, and simple. It's not real hard. It's not rocket science, people, okay. Then also learn different sexual techniques. Like I said, you know, don't just do the regular. I mean, the, on average, there are probably eight to ten basic sexual positions. And if you do a variance of two or three on each of them, that will expand them. However, it always comes back to the normal basic eight to ten uh, sexual positions. <laughs> so, um, you know, up, up, up your repertoire. You know, read more books about different types of sexual positions. Um, different things that you'd like to try. Uh, people in different cultures have sex differently. You need to think about that, okay? Look that up. Talk about sexual desires and fantasies. I am more than happy to tell you my fantasies never happen. <laughs> I sure hope that you are willing to tell me yours because I'm going to tell you mine. That is definitely for sure, for show, for show, okay? Um there are people who have been married and having sex for an awful long time and don't have a clue what their partner's true sexual fantasy really is. Um, you, that means you're not talking. You need to talk more. Um, ask those questions um, because you need to know whether or not I need to know. I'll put it back on onus on me so I don't offend anybody. I need to know how far to the left I need to go with you, Okay. Um, and how to handle that. And I got to wrap my mind around some of the things that you may be talking about them, and I'm saying in my head, I don't think so, Jack. I don't know if I'm going to do that. But at some point in time, I may be ready to do that, and I need to communicate that to you. Maybe not this second. Um, let me think about that a little bit more. I need to do a little more research on that so I can find my comfort spot. And then I need to know that, you know, you and I have intimacy enough prior to this that, It'll be special. It's just not the part of the bang, bang, bang routine. Um, learn some strategies to boost sex drive. Um, there's masturbating, there's fantasizing, and so, so, so many others, okay? Um, so just take that all in heed, and remember, we're getting ready to go ahead and go to break, y'all. And when we do come back, we are going to finish up with talking about some of those fantasies. We're going to talk about um, drugs period, if you want to call it that way, um, and um, how to raise your libido for those of you who have low libido. So we're going to give you a few tips on that. So go ahead, refill your drinks, come on back, and I'll see you in 2.5 minutes. Be back. Spinderella, cut it up one time. <laughs> Come on. Let's talk about sex, baby.
avoid or make void the topic, cause that ain't gonna stop it. Now we yeah. talk about sex on the radio and video show. Many will know anything goes. Let's tell it like it is and how it could be. How it was and of course how it should be. Those who think it's dirty, have a choice. Pick up the needle, press pause, or turn the radio off. Will that stop us, Ted? I doubt it. Alright then, come on, spin. Let's talk about sex, baby. Make any man buy Pop the you mm. got to get whatever she don't got Sellers drew like fools But then again, they're only human The tip was a hit Because her body was booming uh, Gold, pearl, rubies, crazy diamonds Nothing she wore was ever common Her date, heads of state, men of taste Lawyers, doctors, no one was too great for her To get with or even mess with The press, she says, was next on her list And uh, believe me, you, it's as good as true There ain't a man alive that she couldn't get next to She had it all in the bag she should have been glad But she was mad and sad and feeling bad Thinking about the things that she never had No love, just sex Followed next with the check and the note The last night was so, 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 so Take it easy now. Let's talk about sex, baby Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. This show is based upon men and women of each generation being able to talk and explore the various life cycles from cradle to the grave, learning from each other's experiences. Couch Chronicles empowers those who have taken the journey but may not have the understanding of their options to grow to the strongest kings and queens that they are. Tune in to Couch Chronicles, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern with Simone Hurt on TheRadioNetwork.com. Welcome back, welcome back. All right, all right. How's everybody doing? Welcome back, welcome back. Hope everyone is doing well tonight. It is your girl, Miss Simone with Couch Chronicles. We are live, and I'm dishing out some truths tonight, and we're talking about our topic of how high or how low is your sexual libido. And we're here, you know, planting some seeds of education on some people, just dropping a little knowledge, that's all I'm saying, and uh, letting people understand that, you know, different people have different types of uh, libido. And sometimes some are high, some are low, some are in the middle, some are cold, some are hot, hot. Um, and we started the first part out talking about uh, the different things that can make your, your libido low. Um, and we're going to finish up with that for just a few more seconds because um, there's some things I want to say about that. And then we're going to address those high-driving sex <laughs> people, whether you want to call them oversex, normal high-sex people, uh, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to address y'all. We're going to save y'all for the best for the last. So here we go. Um, Health issues can actually affect uh, your libido. Uh, a reduced sex drive um, can, can actually be a sad side effect. Side effect of either um, unhappiness, mental issues, uh, medications, uh, whether people are on antidepressants, they are definitely known for lowering your libido. Um, if um, females are on the pill, there's a percentage of women that because of the hormones that are in the pill, um, for contraceptive use, 
um, aren't it doesn't you know make them be able to express themselves fully sexually. Their libido is very low, or not as low as is not low to not want any, but not as high as it would normally be if they're not taking the pill. So um, some physical illnesses and medical conditions can cause a loss of sex drive, uh, including, uh, including anemia if you have kidney failure, hypothyroidism. It's an underactive thyroid gland, uh, depression. Okay. Um, and the effects are different um, versus female versus male. Now, for females, some of the medical conditions uh, that drive a lower, uh, drive your sex drive lower is menopause. I know everything about that, y'all. Woo, child, I'm trying. I'm coming out towards the end. Hallelujah. Get ready to see the light. But because of the drop in, in sex um, hormones, menopause tends to put you in a position that you're just not – um, interested, uh, your desire is not as strong as it used to be, and you don't think about it as much as you used to either. You have so many other things going on. Your hormones are not balanced enough to create a um, a very positive environment um, for the best sex that you possibly have. Um, other issues can be... Um, uh, was this vaginis? Vaginis? <laughs> I can't say it, y'all. I'm sorry. I have to apologize. It's the involuntary, not under the woman's conscious control, clamping or spasming of the vagina, vaginal muscles, making penetration difficult, if not possible. It's vaginis. Um, that's. I think that's the best way I can say it. Um especially during penetration, I mean, excuse me, not penetration, uh, pregnancy, childbirth, and breastfeeding. Um, because of the changes in hormone levels that um, your body goes through with having to do those things, um, you just don't seem to have the energy, the strength, uh, and as well as the desire. Um, any type of infections such as thrust, UTIs, urinary tract infections, and problems reaching orgasm because your mind is so far gone on other things about did I finish the laundry, did I put the whites in yet, did I do this, do I do that, from just the day-to-day -day chore, work, um, life, <laughs> family, children, um, if, if you're, a woman is not relaxed enough, it is harder for her to be able to reach um, a good orgasm, okay? Um, and then there are women who take a lot longer to reach their orgasm um, than most men would actually like. Now, at this point, that's where you really would have to talk with your partner because there's some things missing, and she needs or that person needs to tell you what they need to help get everybody to you know the right point. But those conditions that affect male libido are just basic hormone changes, and as a, especially when a man ages. Now, your testosterone levels are off the roof between 20 and 30, and they start waning after 35, okay? Um, so all the tricks you used to do with it and all, you know, how you can hang from the ceiling with it can't happen or normally does not happen at once you get to 50, between 50 and 60. Now, there are some men out there, and I will tell you, I've dated some older guys, and they go to the gym every day, and they got their stuff going on. Their blood flow is flowing everywhere. I'm just trying to tell you. Um, and... You know, I think part of the issue is that men are, are more shameful to talk about um, that condition because they're not accustomed to not being able to perform to their liking, uh, to not be able to reach the satisfaction that they used to, to reach. And a lot of times you guys don't um, really know how to have the conversation. And a lot of that goes back to what I said before. If there's no trust and there's no transparency, within the relationship before all this happens, this is why it's so difficult to even be able to begin to have that conversation. Sometimes you need to have the conversation even before it even happens. That's why I was telling people, even though this is not your situation or a problem that you have now, you need to hear this because this is conversations that you're not, you know, may not have been privy to or you've heard about it, but you, you're not engaged in it because it's not happening to you at this moment. So um, there's impotence not being able to achieve or maintain an erection needed for sex. There's a lot of males that are having that difficulty, and you need to seek 
you need to seek your medical attention. You do. Because there are things that can help you to over, you know, override or to come out of having that situation. And you just have to be patient. Um, so just, you know, you got everybody, look, think about it, talk about it, get, seek, you know, seek help, assistance, so that you can get back to being you and feeling the best you that you could possibly be. So that you can love your bad self. That's all I'm saying. You know, if you don't ask, you will not know. So you got to ask. Um, premature, premature ejaculation. Gentlemen, this can happen at any time. You can be very healthy, and this can actually happen to you, okay? It's the lack of control over ejaculation causing it to happen sooner than you are anticipating, okay? Now, a lot of y'all like to sit up there and talk about, oh, it was just so good. I, I, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it no more. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, well, where, where was your, you know, you, you and I both know that this is a mind game. This, you, you got, your mind has got to be the bigger muscle, okay, to control the other muscle, okay, um, to be able to do some things. But like I said before, there's issues at work, being overworked, stressed, uh, emotional and mental issues that are going on within your life or are or, or happening, um, environmental issues, okay, based upon um, inside or outside issues. These things can happen to you. You're not going to be young forever. And as you grow older, you're going to have to learn how to evolve, how to grow, and learn that what used to please you before may not be what pleases you now. So it will consist, you know, if you, people who are together and in relationships or having consistent relationships, that's why I said you got to talk about it because you can't get over it until you talk about it. Um, I didn't even see this one. It's called retarded ejaculation, not being able to reach orgasm. Ladies, we had a conversation not too long ago, and it was brought to our attention that there are quite a few men out there that are faking orgasms. And this actually happens. Now, I don't know if women uh, have had that experience with a gentleman or not, but um, they they faking just like you faking, you know. And the guys, I don't know if y'all saying anything. I don't know how many, you know, people are in the room having the, you know, having this discussion while I'm talking. But look, everybody's faking the funk, okay? Now, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But for me, I would rather. I'm not going to keep faking the funk of nothing. That's too much energy and time. I need to get to where I need to be, to be happy, and I want my partner to be happy as well. So just think about it. Think about that. Have conversations about it. You you just don't know. You never know, okay? Um, so, you know, that like I said, I talked about there are many different ways that are affecting, you know, your low libido is affecting it's a side effect of something that's going on that, that you're having an issue and problem with. One I didn't even mention on the female side was actually um, dryness. We as women, as we get older, and due to menopause, due to a lot of other factors, uh, especially hormone, because we lose estrogen as well as we get older and are not as uh, useful and as um, – uh, spry and spunky as we used to be, and some of us are carrying a little bit more weight than we used to carry as we've gotten older. And due to these outside uh, issues and effects or side effects, um, bring on other conditions. And, and our homegirl just ain't working like she used to work. We could tell her at one point in time when you're young, you could tell her, oh, turn it on, turn it on, let's water fountain, water fountain, whoosh. Okay, now I don't have it like that in the 50s, baby. <laughs> You're going to have to reach over to the, to the corner and get you some lube. That just is not going to be happening today. No siree. Um, but that's different for everybody. And, look, age has nothing to do with it. It can happen to you in your 30s. It can happen to you in your 40s. It can happen to you in your 50s. And it cannot happen to you at all. Some people are very, very fortunate and very, very lucky that they have gone through life. There are older men in their 70s and 80s. I know some 80-year-old men that are still getting it in, y'all. Woo! I'm trying to tell you, they're still getting it in, on and popping. <laughs> so I'm just saying, these are things and cycles that we go through as individuals and as people. And for us to have better sex lives, to have greater 
usage of our body and our time, we have got to have more conversations. So I hope everybody's on board with that. And we're going to talk about next, huh, what, what can we do to raise this libido? Well, number one, there's a lot of, lot of different ones. I can tell you some straight off the top of my head because I've done a lot of research on, on this kind of stuff. Um, low, lowered libido can be treated. So don't think this is the end of the world. It is not. It is just a condition that we're going to work on and we're going to make better so that we can have a high libido. I don't know how high you can go now based upon, your, you know, your age, your health. Okay, your health plays a big, big part in this now. Um, you know, how much you drink, how much you smoke, okay, or, or you know, have <laughs> – I'm sorry, I'm laughing so hard. They have, you know, knowingly mm, – sex does make people look better and make you want to have sex more, but that doesn't mean that you're having uh, great sensational lies feeling uh, sex. You're having sex. You enjoyed it. But you might not have reached that orgasm as high as you possibly could have because you were that inebriated or, or that high. Let's put it that way. Um, you could do stress management, hormone therapy. Look up, look or talk to a sex therapist. Go to your gynecologist. Men, talk to your urologist, okay? It can be checked out by simple medical history, physical examinations, and blood tests, okay? Now, we have reserved the last 15 minutes of this show for my favorite, favorite people. Those of y'all, I call y'all the race car drivers that have this high sex drive. Now, I don't know what you're doing to have such a high sex drive. I know they can care of themselves. And, and for that, I applaud you. God, I just applaud people who are just really doing them. They're really making sure that they are lasting as long as they possibly can. It's like a car. They are taking care of that, that vehicle, honey. They are not going to let anything being bad or, or done or dinged or, or anything with that car, they're going to take care of it. And, uh, and sometimes some people need a little help to take care of it. There are some um, aphrodisiac foods that uh, can boost your libido. Now, one of my favorites is chocolate. Chocolate and some wine will boost a, a whole lot of stuff for me, so I'm just saying. Um, but for other people, you may not drink, but so chocolate is definitely, definitely on the list. I also recommend maca. Maca is a sweet root vegetable with several health benefits. Um, it's from South America, and most people usually use it to boost fertility. And it's got a nickname. It's called the Peruvian Viagra, okay? Um, and it is part of the cruciferous vegetables, including broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and cabbage, okay? Um, you can go to your local store and find maca, or you can go into um, GNC or any place like that that sells vitamin and supplements and get that as um, a boost for yourself, okay? Ginkgo biloba. Woo, I know all, all about ginkgo biloba, honey. I used to take that. Um, when I started my menopause, I needed a little boost. And trust and believe me, this herbal supplement uh, does give you a little lift up, um, okay? It was traditionally used in Chinese medicine to treat ailments, including depression and poor sexual function, okay? So if you want to keep yourself as you get older, uh, revving at a higher rate, uh, stay wet as possible at the highest rate that you can based upon your circumstances, that is definitely one to actually uh, look into. Now, the disclaimer is uh, you can try anything you want. I don't recommend it unless you talk to your doctor first. So there you go, okay? Um, check that out if you need to. There's red ginseng. Now, I, I don't think I have a male friend that has not done red ginseng and mixed it with some Red Bull, trying to be up all night long, I'm just trying to say. Uh, it does have its benefits, and it does uh, help uh, sometimes uh, too much, and, but I wouldn't use it often. It doesn't have good side effects. Um, so whether you're female, I know there's males that, I mean, females have actually tried it as well, but mostly I know men um, that do it. But it's a blood thinning medication, and it, it's a treatment of hormone-sensitive uh, issues, especially cancer. In some cases, um, it may also cause headaches, constipation, or minor stomach upset. Now, if you're willing to swap that out um, for your woo-woo, that's fine that you need to get. That's all on you. 
Um, if not, I would not recommend it on a regular basis. Um, and it does boost the sex drive and erectile function. So I will say that. So please make sure that you go to your doctor and you talk about these things to find out if you're even in good enough health to take any of these things, please, okay? Fenugreek is available worldwide. It's from South Asia, and it's used in South Asian dishes. And um, it's also anti-inflammatory and libido-boosting treatment, okay? Um, and you don't need to take it a lot. And you can there's um you can actually get 600 milligrams of ex- extract and try it out for a couple weeks. It increases your sexual arousal, and if you're having any more uh, additional orgasms, if your orgasms get deeper. Um, but like I said, it does come in a supplement form, um, and it also contains other health benefiting things like magnesium, zinc, um, which can contribute to the results. Okay. And also zinc is a nutrient that plays a key role in male fertility. So if y'all ain't trying to make no babies, I would not suggest this one for you, okay, because it's going to make sure your swimmers make it all the way up to the canal, okay? So I'm just going to let you know that right off the bat. Now, due to its influence on sex hormones, uh, fenugreek may also interfere with the treatment of hormone-sensitive cancer. So if you cancer in your family, if you're cancer prone or if you have cancer, this is definitely not one that um, you're going to be able to do. One of the things that um, surprised me that was on the list, and I, 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 I now relate this back to uh, my father. My father used to, every Friday night, when we would sit down for family night to watch TV, was always eating pistachio nuts. And he just said that they were his favorite nuts. But now that I'm thinking back on it, I, I'm kind of thinking that maybe he knew something that I didn't know. Okay, uh, they do have nutritional value, that's for sure, and they also help to manage, uh, do weight management, and they do reduce the risk of heart disease. They also help reduce symptoms of erectile dysfunction, and not to say that my dad had that. I'm just saying that he ate an awful lot of pistachios <laughs> once a week, and I have also have uh, brothers and other male cousins that eat pistachios quite often. So I was just shocked and amazed that this was actually uh, on the list that would definitely help with um, erectile dysfunction. So for those of you who can eat nuts, uh, feel free because it is, you know, will make you nutritionally happy. Um, It is um, definitely, it appears to increase blood blood flow, so it contributes to a much firmer erection. Um, But please talk to your doctor in regards to that. Um, One of my favorites is saffron. Saffron is a spice derived from um, a crocus flower. It's native to Southwest Asia, and and it's one of the most expensive spices by weight. Um, It is also used as an alternative to help treat depression, reduce stress, and it's a mood enhancer. So if you're really trying to get in the mood and you really want to be relaxed, um, eating foods that have saffron in it will definitely um, or may help to increase that sex drive in individuals, especially if it says if you're taking an antidepressant medication, check with your doctor and see if it's okay to actually take um, saffron along with that as well, okay? Um, women have reported that um, it gives them a higher level of arousal and has increased lubrication properties, Um so uh, I don't know what to tell you on that. <laughs> Just make sure you check with your doctor. It is definitely something that I like um, and I take, but that's because I just love eating the foods that have saffron in it. Uh, like I said, chocolate. How, how many of my people out there? Oyster lovers. Oh, yes. Oysters definitely uh, support libido enhancement. Uh, honey. It's been used for centuries to increase people's libidos. Um, here's one. I was I was not shocked, but okay. I wasn't expecting it. Hot chilies. According to popular belief, capsaicin, the compound that gives the hot chilies its spiciness, stimulates nerve endings on the tongue, causing the release of sex drive drive boosting chemicals. Now, there's no study. It gives a disclaimer. There's no study support of this belief, but they have had conversations or with studies with people who say that um, eating hot chilies enhances their moods. Um, And last but not least, on the list, 
Alcohol may act as an aphrodisiac by helping both men and women to actually relax and get into the mood. But, however, high alcohol intake can, will, and may reduce arousal and sexual function. So moderation is the key. Um, a lot of us may indulge a little too much, have a little too much fun, and we actually could have had a heck of a lot more fun if we did not engage so much. So that's my list of things, people. Um, I don't know what else to say to you. Go back to the beginning. How do we raise our sexual libido? I gave you some ideas. Please make sure that you contact your doctor uh, or speak with a health nutritionist person so that you know that you are mixing the right things. Uh, for my male friends out there that are still mixing those those little, um, I don't know, with the pills with the bull on it, with that Red Bull <laughs> drink, please stop doing that. You are killing your heart. Oh, my God, Okay. You're gonna. Some, uh, I'm not even gonna say in it because I don't even. Want, I don't want to even have to do a disclaimer on it. We just don't. You should not be doing that. That's not healthy for you. Um, we all know what it does for you, but you should. You're gonna have to learn to to eat more healthy foods and get more exercise, more sleep, and and also um, just try different things. It's you know at a certain point in time in your life, you got to get into. Uh, look at into other avenues because you've been doing the same thing kind of for an awful long time. You talk about two, three, four decades. And, and you know, um, I'm just saying there's a plethora of, uh, that must be my word for the day, plethora uh, of different types of sexual positions and different types of sex. Okay? So make sure you look that up. Talk about it with your partners. And um, try something new this week. And this may not be this week, at least before the month is out. Um, if you haven't heard my 12 Days of Sexing for Christmas, you definitely need to hear that. Um, I will encourage everyone to uh, go to the website, become a member. It's free to do so. And when you do that, you get access to having to listen to um, a lot of different shows that I've done. And I think the last three or four of them that I've done are, are up still playing. Um, like I said, tap on my face a couple times. I go to the host, tap, find Simone, tap on my face, and then start looking through some of the shows and listen to some of them. They've got a lot, lot of information that um, is given in a month's time of work. Um, and Legacy was one of my more popular shows that I've done recently. And it gives so much intrigue and interest into, you know, what a legacy is and how to leave a legacy for your, for your family as well as for yourself. So um, go ahead and do that, and we'll be so happy that you do. Um, so in closing, I do want all of my people to understand that I am always happy to have you here listening. Anytime, just please go ahead and make sure that you become a member. The membership has its privileges, I'm telling you, and it's free. No excuse, guys, no excuse, okay? And that way, if you miss a show here and there, you can always go back and check it out. We're going to do um, a formal goodbye and thank everybody for being here. Uh, for all my kings and queens, make sure that you do um, the best that you can. Learn something new. Try something new. Um, it makes life exciting, and it's empowering. And I hope that there was somebody out there that something that was said today um, either helped you to grow, helped to elevate your knowledge base, or taught you something new. So in closing, thank you so much for your time, your energy, and I hope that you come back next week. Um, and your girl, Miss Sloan, is going to sign out because I'm about sex talked out. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore. But guess what? I love you. We all love you. I hope that you sign up with LUV Radio Network dot com. We not only have great hosts, there's other hosts other than myself. I'm not I'm not greedy. I don't mind sharing. Check them out. You might find somebody that you really like and want to hear from. Also, make sure that you listen to some of the past shows that you might have missed. And we're gonna keep the party rolling. So with ado, I love you. I hope you love yourself. Don't forget to be your B A bad self. I'm just saying, just be bad. Life is too short to be nothing else but the baddest version that you can possibly be. And you have a wonderful evening. Until I see you next week, uh, Wednesday, same time at 9 p.m. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll see you next week.
Take care, everybody. Have a blessed week. Mm-hmm.